everybody, welcome back to Crafting and Crime Daily. I am your host, Rebecca, and I recap live trials so you have something to listen to while you're crafting on President's Day. How do you celebrate President's Day? Here's how I celebrate it. I'm doing a video. I put on my comfy clothes, my comfiest sweater, and I just spend the day crafting. Just another day. <laughs> If there's a parade, I don't know about it. Tell me how you spend your President's Day. Because a lot of you have the day off. Yes. So today I'm going to update you. I'm going to bring you all the way up current on the Adam Montgomery trial. As you know, Adam Montgomery has been charged with the murder of his five-year-old daughter who went missing in 2019. People didn't know she was missing. For a couple of years but according to kayla montgomery adam's ex-wife adam murdered harmony at the age of five years old on december 7th of 2019 and then proceeded to carry her body around for several weeks before disposing of it and he has never disclosed what he has done with what remains of harmony montgomery now, while this may be disturbing for some of you, I do not go into any details of how he committed the murder or what he is alleged to have done with the body, other than carry it around in this red cooler that belonged to, to his mother-in-law. I don't think he liked his mother-in-law. Anyway, he's also charged with second-degree assault based on a prior event where he is alleged to have given her a black eye, Harmony, a black eye. And through several different, different witnesses, we've learned that he allegedly did that because he came out of the bathroom and found Harmony Montgomery smothering his infant son, and he basically backhanded her. So that's one of his charges. And then mutilation of the corpse is a couple of the other charges, which he has conceded to. Yes, you can find me guilty. He's not pled guilty. There's a difference. He's maintaining his not guilty plea. And he's just telling the jury through his defense attorneys, go ahead. You can find me guilty. Uh, yes, I hauled it around in a red cooler. Yes, I did that. I got rid of the body, but I did it the cover-up because my wife killed Harmony and I was supporting her. Now, how in the world the jury is actually going to consider that coming out of the mouths of the defense attorney? I don't know because I don't know that Adam is going to testify. He has not stepped one foot into this courtroom during this trial. He is, he is opted as his right is, he doesn't have to be there. He has opted not to be there. He's asked every day, you want to come to court? Nope, don't want to come to court. So he hasn't been there. But he's got some good attorneys. He really does. I think they're doing a, a, a pretty good job. They're not just phoning it in. They're doing a good job. So I want to bring you up on the testimony that's gone on for the last several days. First, let me kind of set the stage for the testimony that's coming down the pike here. The murder occurs on December 7th, at which time they have been, 10 days prior to this, they were evicted from the home that they were living in, grandma's home, but nobody was paying the mortgage, so they get evicted. Now they're homeless, living in the Chrysler Sebring, Carmody's having accidents, naturally she's five years old they don't have access to a bathroom she's scared to death of this man her father you know because he's i don't know anyway beats her um so she's not telling anybody she's got to go to the bathroom and she's having these accidents and he's getting angry with her and you know things are escalating there's two two other small children in this car there's five people living in this little chrysler C chrysler seabury so Harmony's murdered that night. Their car breaks down. They end up sleeping for a couple of days in, a, in an Audi, which belonged to the drug dealer that supplied them with their drugs. And after that, 
they go to live with grandma, Adam's wife, Kayla's mother. They live with her for a few weeks. Then they go into a shelter. From the shelter, they go into a place called the Union Street Apartments. All of these places are going to be very important. Meanwhile, Adam gets a job at the Portland Pizza Pie Company. It sounds delicious, except until you hear what I have to say about it. Anyway, it's not there anymore. It's, it's a bank now. So the first officer I'm going to talk about, he comes out and he talks about how uh, you know, once they put all that timeline together, like I just outlined for you, they go, to, they get a search warrant, they go to the shelter. But this is because they were notified by the maintenance man at the shelter. The maintenance man testifies he gets a work order because there is a weird smell coming from the air vent in one of the rooms at the shelter. And it happens to be a room that Adam Montgomery and Kayla and his children stayed in. Not, not Harmony. Well, not when she was alive. She was there in the ceiling. Kayla's testimony is when they were at the shelter, he put her in the ceiling. She was in this CMC bag which is this large canvas bag, and he put it up in the ceiling. Remove the air vent, puts it up in the ceiling, and they go to sleep in their bunk beds. I know you, if you're homeless, a bunk bed probably seems like a castle to you, but I can't, can you see me in a bunk bed? I'd probably fall out. Anyway, I get the bottom bunk, please. Okay. So the officer goes out just to investigate this call and um, he recognizes the smell right away. This is, this is decomposition. Now, they're, by, the, by, the, by this time, they're, you know, they're on to Adam. They're looking for this child. So they go over to the shelter, they get a search warrant, and they start removing the ceiling because that's where the smell is coming from. They remove the air vent and... They said that the odor then was really powerful. And the entire, all the sheetrock in the ceiling is just stained. Because you might want to mute this part, but her bodily fluids were leaking through the bag into the ceiling tile. So they take that ceiling tile including the metal grit, you know, because it's these squares with metal in between. So they take the metal apart, you know, they label everything. Everything's done very precisely, photographed and, and then brought into the courtroom as evidence and unwrapped for the jury to see. Yeah, imagine that. I, you know, just show me the pictures. I don't need to see the actual ceiling, but if you go to watch this trial, if you see all that stuff that's like leaning up against the wall that's wrapped in the evidence paper, that's the ceiling of the shelter that had the smell of decomposition. So they test this, you know, they, they test it. It's presumptive positive for blood and bodily fluids. And so they take it apart package it all up. This officer, together with another officer, drives it down to Florida because he says, we can't just put this on a plane because there's a chain of custody. You have to, you have to have that evidence with you at all times until it's turned over to the next person in the chain of custody. So they drove straight through from New Hampshire to Florida. They did not stop at any hotels. They get down there they turn it into the lab. They go stay in a hotel. They're notified the next day that the lab cannot find enough DNA to, to identify anything. They take the ceiling. They go back home. So another officer finds a different lab that has some different techniques, and they send it there. And it's tested, and the ceiling stain does come back to female DNA that matches Harmony Montgomery. Now, how do they get Harmony Montgomery's DNA? 
Well, they had a DNA analyst come on, and what she said she did was she took Crystal Sori, the biological mother's DNA, together with Adam Montgomery's DNA, and they were able to create a profile for Harmony Montgomery. And the fluids in that sheetrock DNA matched Harmony Montgomery. Then they had a fingerprint analyst come on who had dusted the air vent and the metal grate for fingerprints and did find a, a one print that was identified as Adam Montgomery's fingerprint. Interesting. During this time, they also, after two years, they decided they're going to search these vehicles. The Chrysler Sebring that they were living in while they were homeless, where Kayla says the murder occurred. And after that murder and the car breaks down, they go to the Audi. Well, they find the Audi and they search the Audi. Now, the Sebring, ever since they abandoned it, has been in a junkyard. And when they find it, it's just full of car parts. So um, they were able to send different things, the trunk lining, some different things for testing. I don't, I apologize. I don't know what the results were. And then they find the Audi, which... The drug dealer says he couldn't start and he didn't drive and it was just sitting in someone's back front yard or backyard abandoned and they found that and searched it and they did find her DNA on the floorboard of the Audi. But she was never in the Audi when she was alive, according to everybody's testimony. So it had to be her body that was her deceased body that was in the Audi. Oh boy, this case is horrible. They also found a pink sock. And of course that came back to be Caleb or Harmony Montgomery's sock as well. Then we get a series of people, two former employees from the Portland Pie Company. It just sounds, that's just the name of it makes it sound really tasty pizza, right? Yeah. Like, I want to try that Portland Pie Company. It just sounds delicious. But Adam worked there as a dishwasher. Well, one person said he was a dishwasher. The next person said he was, he helped make the pizzas. I don't know. But he would come to work every day with this cooler and he would store it in the freezer the where where they stored all their food in this pizza company and uh one of the guys was a manager and he said he saw it all the time he said i can tell you where you open it up it opens to the left on the bottom shelf on the left there's the cooler that adam montgomery would bring every day yeah then we had a home depot manager that came with a receipt from February 26th of 2020, when Adam Montgomery purchased limestone, a bag of limestone, and a grinder and a blade for the grinder. And he paid $396.35 in cash for this merchandise. Now, that's significant because Kayla's testimony is that he, when they got to the Union Street apartments, he went into the bathroom of the Union Street apartments, did whatever he was going to do to the corpse, put it back into the bag with the lime, which is supposed to help decomposition and reduce smell, I guess. I don't know, but... <sighs> The whole thing is just disgusting. Anyway, that was what the line was for. I don't even want to, I, I can't even go there to think about what the grinder was for. I, I'm not even going there. Mm -mm. We'll just keep going. Next witness, <laughs> Brendan Heaton. Oh, I'm sorry, Brendan Middleton. I can't read my own handwriting. Brendan Middleton. And, and they're putting these witnesses on out of order <laughs> because he said he, rented a U-Haul for his friends, Travis Beach and Brittany Bedard. Now, they come on later on and testify. 
Travis and Brittany that they got their friend, Brendan, to rent a U-Haul for their friend, Adam Montgomery, so he could move some stuff. Okay. So that rental was on March 3rd of 2020. And this is, um, if you want to match it up to Kayla's testimony, she says this is the point in time where he's done whatever it is, he's done in the bathroom and he's going to dispose of the body. But he's he goes during the middle of the night in this U-Haul and uh, does never never tells her what he's done with the body. And the mileage of the U-Haul was interesting. When it was taken out, it was 5,092 miles. And uh, when it was returned the next day, um, it was taken out at 5, just prior to 6 p.m., brought back the next day at 1.47 p.m. with 5,225 miles. So the person, Adam, took that vehicle and went 233 miles. So does that mean Harmony's body is within this 115-mile radius around the UL company? I, I don't know. And uh, this Brendan did testify he'd never heard of Adam Montgomery at the time that he rented the U-Haul. So then we, the next witness we heard from was a woman named Rose Smith. She was a driver for a um, non-emergency medical driver. So while they were staying at the shelter, they were in a program, you know, this where they stay in the shelter, they get their methadone and someone helps them find a place to live which is how they get at the Union Street Apartments. So they're part of this program, and part of that program is you get a driver to take you to the methadone clinic. So this woman would pick Adam and Kayla up at the shelter, take them to the methadone clinic, and she would watch their kids for them, the little boys. She would watch them. But what she testified to is there was one day when um, Kayla's left eye was badly bruised. And she seemed very upset with Adam. So at the, at the methadone clinic, he gets out. And when he does, Kayla asks the driver, can I use your phone? And Adam, I guess he was on his way into the methadone clinic, turns around, comes back. I guess he heard. And he grabs the phone from the driver's hand. And he says, you are not giving my wife your phone. And she goes, well, can, okay, but can I have it back? So he gives it back to her. She goes back and reports this to her boss and says, listen, I don't want to drive these people no more. I am scared of this guy. Cause she, she described the look in his face as pure evil. And uh, she went and bought pepper spray after that. Good idea. Mm -hmm. When you're driving people to the methadone clinic, yeah, you're probably going to want some defenses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we talked about, we see a landlady, she comes on, the woman that rented the apartment, the Union Street apartment to Adam and Kayla and the two boys. And by then, Kayla had had another baby. Okay, she had a little girl who was an infant at the time that they get into these Union Street apartments, I believe. You know what? I don't know when this infant was born. They haven't said, I don't know. If it was 2020, 2021, I'm not sure when this infant was born. So this lady testifies that there was one occasion where she took Kayla away. Kayla and the infant away. Kayla had been badly beaten by Adam and she took Kayla away. That was her testimony. So then we get another friend from their shelter who comes in and testifies, but she doesn't want to be on camera. So they, we don't get to see what she looks like. So we, you know, we can see like her legs or a table, but we, and we just hear her testimony. She does not want to be on camera, nor was she named. So she makes friends with them at the shelter. And her testimony was that she saw bruises all over Kayla in various states of healing, purple, yellow, green, you know how bruises are when they're healing. She said, I saw a new one pretty much every day. 
then on cross-examination she was uh said well you know do you remember giving this interview and she kind of gave the process the, the defense attorney a hard time well no i don't remember i don't remember what i had for breakfast you know that standard answer and because he was trying to impeach her so he says well you know he shows her the transcript of the interview lets her read through it he goes do you see anywhere in there where you mentioned that you saw bruises on her and she's like, no, I didn't talk about any of the bruises. I, you know, I, in fact, she says she didn't see any bruises on her. So the prosecution now has to rehabilitate this witness. So they get up and they're like, so why did you change your story? Why are you now telling this jury that you saw bruises almost every day? And she goes, well, you know, I had some flashbacks. What? <laughs> so apparently she remembered it at a later time. I'm good. I've got to tell you, other than the police officers, the credibility of these witnesses is horrible. Just horrible, you know. Anyway, all right, now we're going to talk about a new device that I learned about over the weekend the Eco ATM. Did you know this was a thing? I knew it was a thing in Animal Crossing <laughs> that I play on my Switch, where you can go to an ATM and purchase, you know, dresses and items for your island um you'd have no idea what i'm talking about i'm sorry so the apparently walmart has these things called eco atms and they're located near the service counter so if you've ever gone into a walmart who has not gone into a walmart have you never gone into a walmart raise your hand oh my god so when you go into the walmart depending on what entrance you use, you know, the, at the front of the store is the service desk and there's an eco ATM there. So what you can do is you can bring all your old crap there, like your old electronics and stuff, like this microphone that everybody hates. I could take it there. They, the machine scans it and then takes all this information. They'll take your picture. You have to give your ID, you have to, you know, there's a, it's a huge thing. It takes like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Um, and then they make you an offer of money for your item. And then if you accept it, you put the item into the machine somehow. So <laughs> this officer takes the stand and he is testifying about this machine. And how it came to his attention was he is the liaison between a company called Leeds Online and the police department. And what this company is, is anytime anyone goes into a pawn shop or to one of these machines, you can uh, look this up on Leeds Online. And, like perhaps someone has had their Rolex stolen. You can go into this site, the police can, and see which pawn company has purchased a Rolex lately? Because a lot of these burglars or people that are taking things or taking them to the eco machines and selling them. It's a form of a pawn shop. It's a pawn shop in an ATM. Who knew? So, so he identifies this transaction where a Samsung Galaxy phone has been sold through the eco system to a woman named kelsey small kelsey small was adam montgomery's girlfriend after he gets out of rehab two years after the murder still married to kayla but this is his girlfriend kelsey so apparently i'm not sure how if it get, he originally got a flag but he he finds out about this transaction that kelsey makes at this Walmart, she sold four items because they were at this eco machine for a, a good bit of time, 30 minutes or so. And this guy goes to the Walmart, contacts the loss prevention specialist who looks up the footage for these transactions. It was December 20th of 2021. So two years after the murders. and one of the items i don't know what the other three items were but one of the items they sold was this phone 
So this guy then, now that he's got this footage and he sees Adam on the footage and some other girl, I don't know who the girl was. I couldn't, I couldn't place her. Didn't look like Kayla Montgomery. I don't know who she was. She's the one making the transaction, even though the transaction was made in Kelsey Small's name. Kelsey's walking around the cosmetic department with Adam. I don't know why we were showing all this, to be honest with you. I have no idea. But the jury gets to see all the 30 minutes footage of them standing around this ATM, you know, waiting for this transaction to go through. So one of the questions the prosecutor asked this guy was, well, how much did they get for the Samsung Galaxy phone? A dollar. <laughs> a dollar. Like, you got to be hard pressed for money if you're standing at one of these machines for 15 minutes to get a dollar. So he puts a hold on the items. He contacts the Eco ATM company and he puts a hold on the items. And what the reason he does this is to notify them, please don't damage this, don't destroy it, because they're just going to destroy it. You know, they, they don't want this crap. <laughs> they sell it for junk. So they get this phone and then they turn it over to a cell phone analyzer, one of the other officers that testified who analyzes cell phones. And on this cell phone was a Facebook account associated with Kayla and Adam Montgomery. And so they show us some of the Facebook Messenger posts, which were consistent with the Audi breaking down on the night of December 8th and them asking their former friend from Dunkin' Donuts for a jump. We had already seen all this. So was it just to show us how they got this Facebook Messenger post? You know, four witnesses later, <laughs> a lot of complicated viewing of this footage and and that's all it led to. How this was all relevant, I have no idea. I have no idea. None. So court ended for the day on Friday, about 2.30 Eastern time. They didn't have any more witnesses. They ran out of witnesses for the day, but they're not done. They, the judge told the jury they would likely wrap up uh, the testimony by the end of this week and get the case to them, which tells me they're not looking to see Adam Montgomery testify, which is interesting. So in any case, um, she told him, you know, it's a three-day weekend, come back on Tuesday. Then after the jury leaves the room, apparently there's an issue that arose this last week where someone who's been watching this trial or maybe listening to my show if it was you, you better tell me, calls the tip line and says, you know, I've been watching this trial and I've got some information for you. So they send a police officer out to interview this person. And both sides, the defense and the prosecution said that they have the transcript of the interview, but nobody is, they haven't read it yet. So they want the weekend to figure out if this is someone they're going to call as a witness. That should be very interesting. Anyway, all right, so you are all now all caught up with the Adam Montgomery trial. And tomorrow you're going to get all caught up with the Michelle Draconis trial, which is in the fourth week of testimony and doesn't look like there's an end in sight. So have a great President's Day. If you're marching in the parade, I want to see a picture. And uh, if you're lounging at home, let me know what craft you're working on. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye.